So what does it take to be wealthy and financially happy in the Bay Area? Okay. Uh, Bay Area, as we know, is a very expensive place. Uh, it's the it's the heart, it's the tech capital almost of the of the entire world, right? Very expensive place to call home. Housing, of course, everyone knows is super expensive, and uh, super expensive housing causes the rest of the stuff to become expensive. So everything trickles down from the cost of living. Uh, to food, to services, to plumbers, to to everything, everything you want to do in this uh, in this uh, small enclave uh, in this country, and costs a lot more, right? So, so quite naturally, the residents of this uh, of this uh, Bay Area will will of course want to have a lot more money than normal or than usual to to feel comfortable, right? So, Charles Schwab has this survey. Charles Schwab, as we know, uh, is uh, is a is a brokerage firm. It's a financial company. They also have a financial planning angle, right? And uh, they have this survey which says that uh, in order to feel wealthy, or at least for on or for or a, for a typical Bay Area resident or average Bay Area resident to feel wealthy, uh, they consider a net worth of three point eight million dollars as of. 2021 to call themselves wealthy that somehow declined from 2020 uh, could be because uh, folks have uh, different aspirations different expectations in light of covid and all those things but i'm not quite sure as to why that should decline but let's say let's take it as pay at face value right i would say with uh, with what's going on in the economy with the cost of living uh, increases and all those things i, I would say that what you expected in 2020 should actually go up, but but somehow it has gone down. I don't know why. It's a survey, okay? So you always want to sort of dig a little bit deeper when uh, whenever you come across survey data. If you if you read upon what what constituted this uh, this data collection uh, exercise, they interviewed like 750 Bay Area residents between the age of 21 to 75, okay? So this age uh, spectrum, okay? between 21 and 75 tells you something, okay? If if they ended up polling a lot of folks who are on the older side and who have done a reasonably decent job of, uh, of uh, accruing assets uh, uh, through their lives, uh, you would expect them to be uh, wealthier, okay? And they would have a higher number with respect to what they would call themselves, uh, what they would like to be called themselves wealthy versus someone who is on the younger side, of course. There's a starting out, they have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of, uh, they probably, they have a lot of human wealth or, or human resource wealth or how do I say that? Uh, uh, the ability to earn, they have a lifetime ahead of them to, uh, to earn and save and all those things. Whereas someone who's on the older side has basically been there and done that. And uh, they are relying more on uh, their financial capital to sort of tide them through the next phase of their lives, right? One more thing that stands out from the survey is that 49% uh, uh, of the Bay Area locals uh, who have a written financial plan feel very confident, of course. They are a financial firm, they have a financial planning angle, and they would like to sort of tout that fact, but I think it's true, right? Uh, if you're tracking your stuff, if you're keeping track of uh, being able to meet your planned goals and all those things, you will naturally feel more confident, okay? And that's true. So. I think getting a plan, of course, is, is it's a good idea, okay? Uh, and or at least, if you don't know, if you are not working with a planner, or if you don't have someone who can do a plan, for, you can do build a plan on your own, right? You can you can put in some numbers and you can sort of say, okay, this is this is what I want to do, and you can you can browse around through various web web resources and and come across a, a decent plan for you, right? But you always want to be careful with respect to whenever you see survey data and when they when they tout average with respect to anything with demographics with respect to wealth and all because average is always going to be higher than what a typical person uh, would 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 tend to have right and average is typically always going to be higher because 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 of this thing okay so if you look at the distribution of wealth in this country and that's true with uh, uh, with every uh, every uh, capital capital capitalism based economy right where 
folks who own assets folks who own businesses folks who own own real estate okay they would tend to be on the wealthier side because they are using capital to sort of make, to to make more money instead of labor okay so uh, that's that's the way the system is it's it's been working though as as flawed as it is uh it's it's done a remarkable job of lifting the standards of standards of living for basically everyone who has been part of the system right even the poorest of the poor in this in our country have 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 some of the things which uh, uh which uh, even the richest of the rich uh, 100 years back didn't have right so so that's that, that's it but but again uh, wealth is always relative right so you always compare with your neighbors uh, uh, as to what he has versus what you have and all those things right so even though you might be wealthy as compared to uh, as someone 100 years back uh the richest person in the in the in the, in the world 100 years back you still uh you 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 still might feel feel poor relative to your peers right and that's what uh, we sort of see in data as well with respect to wealth inequality not only in uh, hard numbers but also in relative terms right so you see the bottom 50% literally owns nothing okay then comes the next uh, next 40% which owns uh, around 28 29% of the country's wealth then uh, the 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 next 9% owns the major chunk which is around 38% and then the top 1% basically owns as much as the as the bottom 90% combined so if you were to combine this graph with this graph or this, if you were to combine this bar and this bar this will equate to this one at least uh, or, or maybe this is a little bit uh, more than the a combination of this two right so what this tells you is that the bottom 90% own as much wealth as the top 1% okay and that that's the uneven part okay and this top 1% of course oh, has the bill gates and the elon musks and the warren buffetts of the world right so quite naturally if you look at this data okay uh, and if you were to sort of just 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 plot it okay you look at the distribution of wealth right it is it is it is spiking uh, on the right right and so if you were to so this is the median okay this is this is a typical person you encounter uh, every day okay this is a typical person you will encounter this is where the average is going to be okay somewhere around here so of course the average is going to be higher than the median right so you always want to look at the median data more than the average data right so even if you find something where say the an average person is has x amount of wealth okay the median is going to be a lot lower than that okay and we see that okay so this is a federal reserve survey of consumer finance data okay and as you can see uh, an average net worth is quite a bit higher than the median net worth okay and median net worth is the real net worth right of a typical person you encounter in your daily life okay and look at it okay so if you go by uh, what uh, what this uh, what the retire retirement planning uh, from the retirement planning and the income draw perspective right so how much can you safely withdraw from your from your assets to 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 continue drawing that kind of income for the rest of your life without running out of money a typical rule is 4% in this day and age i would use 3% okay so if you are if you are at the 65 uh, and 274 age band Two hundred sixty-six thousand dollars is not going to draw a lot of uh, income for 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 you, right? So two hundred sixty-six. Let, let's round it off to three hundred, right? Three percent of that is nine thousand dollars a year. Okay, so nine thousand dollars a year is the only amount of money you can safely draw from this three hundred thousand dollars of net worth you have, and inflation adjust that for the rest of your life. Okay. it's not a lot of money but that's the that's the situation we have and that's the that's that's that retirement uh debacle or at least what i can uh, what i can say is that the uh the situation we are uh, we find ourselves in as a country where uh, where folks are retiring with not as much money as they should assuming that they want to maintain that say that same standard of living uh, for the rest of their lives okay so it's a problem 
Uh, fortunately, we have social security uh, that's going to come in and fill some of that gap. But uh, uh, from the perspective of the amount of money folks have set aside to tide them through retirement is not as much as we would like to have them have. And that's why I think uh, it comes back down to planning and uh, and uh, doing a decent enough job through your work life of setting money aside and saving. And uh, uh, of course, it's not easy. Uh, folks don't, uh, a lot of the folks don't even make as much to sort of have leftover, right? So because there are, things are expensive. Uh, you have kids college, you have uh, rent payment, mortgage payments, you have all the other expenses which life brings and all those things, right? So it's not easy, but uh, with a little bit of planning, maybe uh, it probably gets easier. So that's all I have to say on this, okay? Thank you.